The mass of the beverage container, two kilograms. And the mass of the forearm is going to be 1.2 kilograms. And we're given in the lower diagram where the center of gravity or the center of mass of each is located. So the forearm is kind of biased towards the hand. And then the beverage container is just at the center of the beverage container there. Again, we want to find the reactions at B. So what are the forces on the elbow that are going to be holding this in the equilibrium? And we also want to find, at least according to that mechanical drawing down below, the tension in CD, which represents the force in the muscle to hold this, uh, the forearm level while holding the beverage container. Right, so for our free body diagram, what is the object that we're going to isolate and then draw the forces that act on it? So we're taking this forearm, we are detaching it virtually, hopefully, from the elbow, uh, and we're detaching it from the muscle as well. And we're going to see what are the forces, what are the couples that act on just the forearm. So this is our simplified forearm. I'll start by putting in my dimensions already. What are the forces or the couples acting on the forearm? Right, the beverage. We know the mass of the beverage, so the weight of the beverage will be acting on the forearm, and it's going to be acting at point A. Right, so the weight of the beverage that we're holding up, it has a mass of 2 kilograms, so the weight is going to be 2 kilograms times gravity, so about 19.6 newtons of force is what it's exerting. What other forces act on the forearm? Right, the tension in the muscle. Uh, the muscle can only, well, muscles like ropes can only pull on things. So we know that there's going to be a tension or a pulling 75 degrees from the horizontal. And I'm going to call that TCD, the tension in the muscle, or in the lowercase, the rope. And it's acting at this point C. What other forces act on the forearm? Right, the weight of the forearm or the beam itself. Again, for most problems, we do ignore the weight of the beam because the forces that are acting on it are much greater than the weight would be, so the weight really wouldn't change our answer that much. In this case, though, because they're only holding something that's fairly not much heavier than the forearm itself, and we're given the weight of the forearm, we are going to account for it. So the weight force at G2, the weight of the bone, we do, and I guess the skin and the muscle attached to it, we're also going to account for. So it's 1.2 kilograms. The weight force pulling it down about 11.8 newtons. All right, uh, and what else acts on our forearm? The pin, right, the pin forces, which are the forces that the elbow is exerting on the beam down here. We'll see later, it's actually the force that the upper arm is exerting on the lower arm acting through the elbow. So because it's a pin connection, we're going to model that as an X component of a force and a Y component of the force. Again, I don't necessarily know its directions. In fact, I know that BX is wrong. Just looking by inspection, since TCD is to the right, BX can't be to the right. Um, however, just out of consistency, I always make the assumption of positive directions according to my coordinate system, and then let the math tell me in the end. If you would rather assume BX is to the left, that's perfectly fine. But just be aware what a positive value versus a negative value is going to mean at the end. Our equation step, using the free body diagram and all of its information, we can write, uh, all, we can solve for our unknowns here. So actually, I'll do this one a little bit differently. So again, we need a sum of forces in the x and the y and the sum of moments around a point. Uh, but if we look at our diagram, we'll think further ahead this time than we did previously. What's a, what's, what equation, if we write it first, 
Will we be able to get numerical answers right away? Again, you don't necessarily have to think about this beforehand, but if we're solving it by hand and we want to make our lives easier, the sooner we can get numbers, the sooner we can answer our problem. Right. If we take a moment first around what point? Right. If we take the moment specifically around B, Bx and By, it's a pin, don't appear in it. So from that first equation, the only unknown that will be in it is the tension in CD. If we took it around A, it's going to have By and TCD in it. So again, it's still a good equation, but it's not as efficient a choice. Alternatively, if we started with the forces equations, which again are, are okay, if we sum forces x just by looking at it, bx and tcd, two variables will be in that. If we sum forces in the y, by and tcd will be in that, so that will also be two. So again, the order doesn't matter, but I'm going to start with the moment equation around b, and I'll be able to get to my solve step right away on that first equation. So if I take the moment around b, counterclockwise is positive, B, Y, B, X do not appear in my picture. Going towards the left side, uh, T, C, D, or at least a component of it, is going to appear. Right, so this angle it makes with the x-axis is 75 degrees. Right, so if we split it up into its vertical component, its horizontal component, horizontal component has no moment around B. So only the vertical component does. So that's sine 75. Right, we'll hold off on the sine for a moment here. The, remember, for 2D, we just care about the magnitude to start. And then the distance that that force acts from B is 65 millimeters. I'm going to leave everything in millimeters here. As long as I'm consistent, that's going to be OK. And this will be in Newtons. Now we have to think, does this cause a clockwise or a counterclockwise moment around point B? Clockwise. Right. clockwise, so it's going to be negative. Right. So that takes care of TCD. Marching along, the next force we encounter is the 11.8 newtons. It's already completely vertical. So we want to find its distance from point B will be the 65 plus the 135. So it's 200 millimeters away from point B. Is this a positive or a negative moment around point B? Again, everything's in millimeters. As long as everything's in millimeters, we're OK here. Newtons, millimeters, newtons, millimeters. Uh, and the last force we encounter is from the extreme beverage. 19.6 newtons. And from B, that is going to be a distance of 300 millimeters. It's also going to be acting counterclockwise around B, so this too will be positive. Because we started with the moment equation, which many times is a good idea. Uh, in these 2D problems because we can get a number right away. The only unknown is TC. So we can solve equation one for the tension in the muscle is 131 newtons. Right. This, a rope or a beam or a cable, can be in tension or in compression. It's positive, meaning our assumption was correct. It is in tension and it has to be because a muscle acts like a rope, it can only hold a tension in it. So one equation for one unknown, we have one thing we're asked to find for, the tension in, in the rope or the muscle CD. But we can get more equations out of our free body diagram, and which we need because we have not yet found the reactions at B. So now the order doesn't really matter too much, so I'll just take the sum of forces in the x direction as my next step. The way that I drew my free body diagram, I assumed Bx was to the right. So it would be positive in my equation. Had I assumed it was to the left, there would be a negative Bx here. Uh, By is only vertical. 11.8 is only vertical. 19.6 is only vertical. So I have also the piece of TCD 
that's in the x direction. So that will be cosine 75. And in my free body diagram, that piece of it points to the right. It's also positive. At this point, actually, this is a, um, important to, to look at. When you're writing your equations, your equilibrium equations, always use the variable names that are in the free body diagram. Notice that even though I'm writing this and I know the value of TCD, don't until the solution step fill in what that value should be. We now know it's 131. This is really important if we get negative numbers in our solution. It's very easy to make a sign error otherwise if you don't first start with the variables exactly as they're drawn, then replace them with their actual numbers. Uh, we'll see some examples of this later, but always write it in the variable first. Now looking at equation two, bx is the only thing I don't know. And it does turn out that bx is negative. Again, negative 34 newtons. For pin reactions or for supports, we're not, this doesn't mean it's in compression. It's a pin. It doesn't have compression or tension. But we do want to interpret our result. This means that the force from the, on the forearm from the elbow actually points to the left. Negative just means our assumption was incorrect or our assumption was the opposite of what it actually should have been. So it's actually to the left. And whether we assumed it was left or assumed it was right, that interpretation would be the same uh, either way. Third, uh, I still have my sum of forces in the y direction. In my diagram, I have the negative 19.6, a negative 11.8. I have plus by. I assumed it was up. And I have now the vertical component of TCD, which also is up. So sine 75. Now in my equation three, since I know TCD, BY is my last unknown. I can solve that BY is actually also negative here, a negative 95 newtons. So actually the elbow is exerting a force down on the forearm. All right, so by the numbers, I found the two reactions at B, the X component, the Y component. But what we might be interested in is when, is when could the elbow fail, the magnitude of the force that's acting on that muscle. Because remember, what's happening in reality is there's not actually two forces acting on it. It's one force acting at some orientation that's actually going to be acting on this. We just simplified it this way because mathematically it's convenient. So this force, we want to know its magnitude because that's, is, again, assuming everything's linear and simple, that's what would determine would the elbow break or would there be a lot of fatigue on the elbow. Yeah. So the magnitude of force that's on the elbow joint, 101 newtons. Yeah. 